All right, so how's everybody doing? Not sure how I wanted to start this video or how the whole thing's gonna turn out. I've been asked to build a couple of long travel FL350s for the odd ones. Um, you can find them on Facebook. All right, do a search. Um, great guys to deal with. But they're really into the long travels I build. And they sent down a couple buggies that I'm gonna put five link rear suspensions on and A-arm front suspension conversions. And that's what you're looking at now is, is my five link setup. And you count them, one, two, three, four, five. All right, what I told them I'd do is I will document the entire builds and I'll give all the secrets away. It's a lot of work to do one of these. It was a lot of money, time, you know, a lot of research, a lot of thinking, a lot of everything. Calculations to get it right. I use parts from different manufacturers. There's Polaris parts, there's Honda parts, uh, there's other parts, we'll cross that. So really, where the builds start for me is with the creation of the axles, all right? And what I do, I take the factory FL350 axle, you can see it there, and, oh yeah, I'll find a better way to film, so, there are better videos, but for this one, we're gonna start. The axle's normally like that, with the little tits that go up, right? And they get cut off. And this is what we're left with, this little stub. So what I do is I machine the stub down, so that when it sits on the axle, this will, a lot of this will be machined off. It'll be machined off to the point where I have more than enough real estate to V it out and weld it to the CV cup, which will sit here. But you see this nub on the axle right here? That's part of the axle that comes out. This will be machined back so that that nub sticks out and a pocket will be put in the back of the CV cup. And what that does is it adds stability because these spline adapters on the factory axle were never designed to sit on there and not have any wobble or you know keep a CV straight. So we do everything we can to put some stability and strength into it. And after the entire setup is, is assembled, and you'll see all that, Everything's reheat treated. So there's step one. I'm starting to cut and work on the axles. All right, well, we're back. We're filming. Um, so talking about the axles. So I showed in the first part of the video how I cut the factory axle up. Okay, and we made these adapters, all right? And the stub sticks out of the end, so no problem. So what we're gonna do is I use Polaris axles, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I use, I buy these on eBay. There's the part number. This axle only fits one or two of the buggies. This is not one of the more universal axles. It was chosen for its length and availability of parts on the, the hubs, etc. It works great. So, what we're gonna do is, is this axle down here. We're gonna take this CV apart. We're gonna take the clamps off, take the boot off, uh, pull the axle out of the inside, get us the cup, and then we're gonna machine the splined end off, and then machine a pocket in the back, like we talked about, and then this adapter is what will be centered and welded to the back, and it'll look something like that, okay? And once it's on there, uh, that assembly will be sent out to be heat treated, Okay, and we're targeting uh, 38 Rockwell on that. Um, there's reasons behind that, and we've tried different hardnesses, and we don't seem to have any problems with that. Um, cup is heated in an oven, and I'll show you that prior to welding this, so we don't get any cold cracks. And um, yeah, everything works great. more progress on the axles so I took the cups that you saw in earlier part of the video and cut the splines off the back and I gotta tell you the cups are 43 40 chrome molly and they're hardened and uh, cutting those splines off the back Wow that uh, I've said in other videos it's harder than Chinese math but it comes off I did not do it on the lathe I didn't want to break stuff up so what we have there in the back is a couple of finished cups all right that have been reheat treated. You can see how they're welded on. All right, what we got here is a cup that's about to be machined. There's a cup that had the uh, pocket put in the back of it. 
and then this one has the pocket put in the back and that tool fits into the pocket for alignment. So, that's what we got going on there. I'm gonna continue with the axles, we'll get them together and we'll see what video's next. So we're continuing on with the axle build. Told you I'd give you some good information. All right, so what I do is the cup goes in the chuck. All right, and I use my adapter to line up the splined adapter in the pocket. All right, and then what we'll do is um, we'll put a little bit of heat with a map gas torch, just, just a little bit. We spin this around a little bit, all right, and we heat it a little bit right where the interface is. And that's just so we can get some tacks on there before we put it in the oven. All right, remember the cup's hardened, and so is the spline adapter. And uh, you want to eliminate the cold cracking. You know, we need to tack it well enough so we can keep it in alignment and put it in the oven. All right, and once we put it in the oven, we go about 375, 400 for like three hours. We just let it sit there. All right, these ones have been tacked up. All right, and we'll see if you can see down in there. You can see the pocket. All right. And their alignment and uh, they'll get welded to look like those and then everything gets sent out and reheat treated um, axles will soon be ready to go and uh, we'll bring the frame in and start doing some work there all right all right so a little bit more we're in the lab here what we do is we got a little oven okay and we heat the cups like I said, 350, 400 degrees. We let them go for a couple hours, make sure they're good and hot. These uh, have already been welded and are actually cooling down. So we'll pop those out and uh, they'll be you know, glass beaded and then sent for heat treating. And then uh, we got our axles done and we'll be good to go. All right.